Good morning, Wabash. Speaking today at Pioneer Chapel will be Coach Don Morrell, Connor Thompson, Cameron Ford, Gavin Rupert, Owen Volk, Stephen Thomas, and Blake White with their talk titled Monon Bell Talk. As I approach my third Monon Bell game this Saturday, there have been two thoughts weighing heavy on my mind, and I want to share both of these with you today. First is my own experience after the outcomes of the last two Monon Bell games. The first of these games are, the results of these games are painfully burned into my memory. The last two times we faced off against the school down south, we watched as a sea of black and gold rush the field towards a 300 bell we care so deeply about. My freshman year, our team collectively took a knee while we watched thousands of Dannys run past us with their middle fingers up, screaming obscenities at our team, showcasing just how little class and dignity they have. And last year when we lost by three points in a double overtime battle, it was not shocking to see the Danny celebrate in this style once again. Although the two losses on November 12, 2022 and November 11, 2023 were truly heartbreaking, in hindsight, I am thankful for these losses. In the words of hockey player Brett Hull, losing is essential to anyone's success. The more you lose, the more you wanna win. And this year, more than ever, I know this team is willing to do whatever it takes to win because that's what a Wabash man does. The second thought I want to share with you, and frankly think you all should hear before Saturday's game, is just how well this team embodies our motto, Wabash Always Fights. In our defensive meetings, Coach Gilbert often reminds us that Wabash Always Fights isn't just some slogan we put on the wall or on a t-shirt because it looks cool. But rather, Wabash Always Fights is a constant reminder to us as we take the field each week to carry ourselves in a way that makes every former Wabash man who wore the scarlet and white on Saturdays proud to say he did so. From the time we walked off Frank Navarro Field last year, every guy on this team displayed what it truly means to be a Wabash man and always fight, no matter how hard you're knocked down. And when the game clock struck double zeros last November, our team was knocked down just about as far as you can be. But by God, did we get up and fight. We fought every morning in the weight room during the winter. We fought when our defensive coordinator left to take a new job. We fought at each and every spring practice. We fought when every outsider with a Twitter account claimed we couldn't win the big games because we lost 14 seniors. We fought when we learned our brother Blake White would miss the rest of the season with an injury, and we, fought, and we continued to fight when we were down in the fourth quarter against Witt and Dennison. Every individual on this team has had to fight and sacrifice personal gain for the betterment of the team again and again, but they are willing to do it because of the love they have for each other and the love they have for this college. The school down south, they cannot say the same. They haven't had to face adversity or rely on their brothers in the heat of battle. They've had a cakewalk to a nine-win season. We'll see what happens when they meet a bunch of pissed off little giants on Saturday and see the look in our eyes. <laughs> the look they see is gonna be one that shows we are willing to go farther than they can ever imagine to bring back our bell. Saturday, we will ride 29 miles south and take what is ours. God bless Wabash College. Ding, ding. Just about a year ago, out on that field, we experienced one of the most agonizing defeats I've ever been a part of. I sat on that field after the game, watching them run across the field and celebrate. I was defeated, and quite frankly, I was sad that I would never get to play with my roommates and the rest of the seniors again. But I woke up the next day and the sun rose again, and I made a decision. I was going to work as hard as I possibly could to get that bell back right where it belongs, in Crawfordsville, Indiana. I'm extremely proud of the way this team has grown, and I'm proud to call you guys my brothers. I will forever cherish the times we spent on road trips, game days, winter workouts, and even the time we spent four hours on fall break redoing the entire weight room. <laughs> it's bittersweet to reflect on these times, but this story isn't over yet. Our journey doesn't end on Saturday. On Saturday, from 1.07 p.m. until that final whistle blows, we will face our enemies as a team. With tremendous confidence and determination, we will take the field as a unified group with one goal, to win. As we travel to Danny Land, remember the faces of those sitting in this room and the faces of all the Wabash faithful who have supported us all year and know that we are playing for something greater than just ourselves. We're playing for the name on our chest and everything it represents. As fans, I ask just one thing from you all. Bring the juice like you always do. In the land of black and yellow, wear your scarlet and white with pride. As I conclude, I want to read a verse 
I frequently think about. Isaiah 6, 8, which reads, And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. To my teammates, I compel you to be strong and courageous and answer the call. And remember this, as the great Babe Ruth reminded Benny the Jet Rodriguez, heroes are remembered, but legends never die. Ding, ding. My journey here at Wabash College and my view of the Monon Bell game is much different from the other captains here, here with me today. For most of my career as a football player, I was in a supporting role, whether that was as the backup quarterback or as the punter. Seeing very few snaps, but doing what I could to make a difference, no matter how small it may seem. Though not the glory or fame any player would want, it did not make the win here at home my freshman year, in which the Dannys blew a 21-0 lead any less special. Though I wish I could be taking the field as your starting quarterback on Saturday, I will once again be supporting my team from the sideline. After being injured earlier this season, I knew I would never put a helmet and shoulder pads on again. Adversity is how I would describe my Wabash career and this season for our football team. At the beginning of the season, it seemed everyone had doubts about us. Many great players had graduated, and everyone outside of the football team was uncertain how we would be this year. But if you were to ask the football team during fall camp how we would be, we all knew that we were destined to be great. Many doubted us again when I was injured for the season against Owu, but I, n I never had a doubt in us. In adversity, this team thrives. And this season is a testament that this team is bigger than just any one player. We've had many injuries this season and been in many tough situations versus great teams, but that never seemed to matter. Through any and all adversity, and despite all odds, this team has found a way to win because this team is full of Wabash men. This Saturday, we will have our struggles, and we will face adversity, but I have faith in this team. And I hope people doubt us, because I've always been a big fan of proving people wrong, and I've been an even bigger fan of winning. The Spartans, just much like the Little Giants, live by a motto, come back with your shields or on them. And all I know is this. On Saturday, I'll be putting the pads on one last time to take the field with my brother. Together, we will fight with everything we have, and in the end, against all odds, we will come back with our shields in our hands and the Monon Bell held high. Ding, ding. Yeah. It's a saying that you never know what you had until you lost it. And that 300 pound bell has been on my mind since November 12th of 2022. A snowy afternoon when a piece of Wabash was taken from us. The loss from that game is one that will never leave my mind till the day I die. As a team, we had some work to do, no excuses. Get up and walk from your warm and cozy dorm into, into the winter snow to get to the weight room at 5 in the morning and get better. All that hard work done in the offseason, feeling great, to then come short last year when we had another opportunity. The process then starts again. Get up, dust yourself off, and get back to work. As many of you may know, I was not here in the spring and therefore had to put a lot of work in by myself. It was very hard not having my teammates there to encourage me or pick me up when things got tough. Some days I would sit and ask myself why. Why am I putting in all this work? What am I doing it for? Something that I firmly believe in is whatever you do cannot be done selfishly, but must be done for someone else. If something you are doing is being done for a selfish reason, you will quit when the going gets tough. If you are doing it out of the love for someone else or something bigger than yourself, then you will strive to keep going. So what is my why? My why is for the love of the game, for, the bro for my brothers I play with and would die for to make my parents proud because my team counts on me to work hard and I count on them to do the same. To make sure that the bell is ringing above the Allen Center entrance where it belongs. I do it for all of you, the brotherhood, something that the school down south does not have. Just as I have my why, so does everyone in this chapel. Everyone at Wabash has a why. It is the reason that Wabash always fights. No matter the failures, Wabash always fights and we do it out of the love we have for other people. It is the reason that we never give up. With the players we had graduate and the players whose season got cut short this year, we were counted out. Unfortunately for the NCAC, Wabash does not care about odds. We fight no matter what. There's a quote by Samuel Beckett that says, ever tried, ever failed. No matter, try again, fail again, fail better. But I can assure you that failure is not going to be seen on Saturday, but only success. Because the school down south has no why. They have no love that exceeds our own. 
It is the reason that I will take our 11 on the field over anyone in the country as long as they are wearing white and scarlet red and have Wabash on the front of their jersey. We are going to win the bell. We will win because they will quit when things get tough. We will win to put the bell back where it belongs. We will win because this front running team down south has had it coming for a long time. We will win to cap off Coach Morell's amazing career. We will win for the guys that would have killed for the opportunity to get the bell back themselves, but had that opportunity taken from them. For Blake White, Jake Pash, Dylan Braun, and 3-3. We will win, and it won't be close. <laughs> ding, ding. For three years, I had an idea about what I wanted to say in my chapel speech. I had the opportunity my freshman year to play in the bell game where our team would overcome a 21-point deficit and win the bell back. I planned on speaking with you today about what made that team special. But nine games into the 24 season, I think it's more important that you all learn today what makes this team special. The success of this team never seemed like a certainty to those outside of the program. We had just lost a large group of seniors, most of whom were multi-year starters. We had just lost our defensive coordinator and gained a new one, and we were going to be playing with a whole group of younger players ready to take the reins. And I just couldn't get it out of my head how much this team reminded me of the 22-23 basketball team. I know, a little bit of a curveball. A team that had just lost the D3 National Player of the Year and many other talented seniors. A team that had just won conference and was coming off a playoff berth where they went as far as the Final Four. I remember expectations for that 22 team were low. I remember people asking questions like, would this team even go 500? They would. And not only that, but they would win the conference for a second year in a row and move on to the playoffs. A Wabash team with no expectations for success would succeed. That 22 team reminds me of a simple fact and one that I would share with my teammates over 10 weeks ago. That fact is, Wabash doesn't rebuild, we simply reload. In the Bell game two years ago, Gavin Patrick, some of you might know him as Donkey, came up to me late in the fourth quarter and told me something that I will never forget. He said, I want you to remember this moment. I want you to remember how this makes you feel. Every day since that game, I have thought about what he said to me. And come Saturday, it finally comes full circle. Come Saturday, the only thing that I plan to remember is one moment, and it'll be on the bus ride home because it'll be pretty hard to forget that sound, ding, ding. The question, why did you choose Wabash, is a question I've been asked quite a bit over my four years as a student here, and I'm sure many of you have been asked the same question. My answer is pretty simple. My brother attended Wabash. I knew more about Wabash than any other school do that, but once I stepped foot on campus, my brother truly helped me understand Wabash and its great traditions in ways he to this day likely does not recognize. The greatest of these moments came my freshman year after the 127th Monon Bell Classic, where the Little Giants overcame a 21-0 deficit to return the bell to its rightful home, Crawfordsville, Indiana. In that game, I took no more than eight snaps in a fullback roll, but the first person I saw as the sea of red flooded the field was my brother and his pot and stripes. The excitement in his approach, the huge hug he gave me, and the words, I'm so proud of you, is something I will never forget. I learned in that moment why this game is so important. I realized that the work put in to win this game was never just for this team, but for every man that has ever elected to attend Wabash College. I realized that the love for people standing by your side is a far scarier force than the hatred of an opponent. And finally, I realized that there is nothing that brings a brotherhood together quite like a 300-pound locomotive bell. So do my teammates. I'm incredibly proud of all of you, and it is an absolute blessing to be able to call myself your teammate. The work we have put in, from 5.30 a.m. workouts in the winter months to the long, hot days of fall camp have prepared us for this moment. We are battle-tested and prepared for any set of circumstances that, come our, that could come our way on Saturday. Wabash always fights, 
And this team has done that together time and time again throughout this season. A one-point victory against Denison at home and a late touchdown and a comeback win against Witt fully exemplifies the grit of this team. Let's go out on Saturday, bring home the bell, and add another conference championship to the long-storied history of this program. And now to my Wabash brothers. While we may be playing 28 miles south on Saturday, I fully expect a home-like environment in the visitor stands like only Wabash men can bring. Before every game, I ask my teammates to give everything they have for 60 minutes. And I'm asking all of you here today to bring every ounce of energy you have for all four quarters on Saturday. I promise you that when that clock strikes zero, it will be a sea of white and red storming that field. And if I can offer some advice, get some rest this week. It will be pretty hard to sleep Saturday night when all you can hear is ding ding. For those of you who don't know me uh, as well as my football team does, and Gavin Rupert reminded me of this yesterday at practice, I am a strong believer in magic. I really am. And some of the seniors know this already, but I will say it again proudly. I believe in the magic of Christmas. Anybody here love Christmas? I, I wore my Christmas tie today because Christmas isn't long enough. You can't do enough Christmas, and I believe in that magic. I believe in the magic of Disneyland. Love Disneyland. Uh, a, a day in the park revives your soul. Love Disneyland. I'm starting to believe more and more in the magic of Chicken Tender Wednesday at Wabash College. <laughs> It's amazing when a guy has about 17 chicken tenders, he feels a little better about life. <laughs> and clearly, I've always believed in the magic of Chick-fil-A. Who loves Chick-fil-A? <laughs> it's on Sundays when you crave it the most, isn't it? That's when you really want it. I also believe in uh, the magic of Harry Potter. Any Harry Potter guys out here? <laughs> Can't, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I believe in the magic, uh, magic of Taylor Swift. <laughs> it's hard to say, man, but you gotta say it. And I know you listen to it when nobody's around. <laughs> but mostly I believe in the magic of Wabash College. This place is amazing. Who here loves Wabash College? <laughs> And I'll ask somebody, I'll, I'll ask a student, hey, do you, love, do you like Wabash College? And you guys will go, oh, I, I love it. And I go, why do you love it? You got like four hours of homework every night. Uh, it's tough. Um, but there's a reason, it, and it's what makes us great. Saturday, our opponent will see our greatness. Our love of each other is stronger than our hatred of them. And we're going to win the moan on belt. Ding, ding. <laughs> One final announcement, let's go get our bell back. Yeah. Now will you all please rise and join me in singing Old Wabash. Yeah. Da 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 da